Good morning. Today is September 9th, 2024, and this is my writer's diary entry this morning. 6.26 a.m. Chilly and it feels early. The sky is just waking up. Anne-Marie stopped by on the way home from her conference. I was really happy to see her. It meant that I didn't get to bed till 10-ish, so I let myself sleep in until about 6.30 a.m., although I did wake easily at 6.10. I did some sudden fictions right off the bat. The first one was, Avery felt the envelope between her fingers. It was Chris, wait a minute. I stopped right there because I realized that first image was of a cool stone, but it wasn't, I wasn't sure why I had wanted to change it. So I went back and began again. Avery sm felt the smoothness of the rock. It was polished and white and clean. It belonged to the rock garden in the front where the rocks were white. In the center of the house, there were a variety of colors. There were some white ones to be sure, but there were different, smaller and less bright. This rock itself seemed different. It was larger and had more personality somehow. She would keep it as a pet. Sudden fiction number two. Torn Key was not a normal name and Torn Key knew he'd be in big trouble if he used it when he arrived at college, just as he had been in elementary school and middle school. The only way he'd avoided the same trouble in high school was that he joined the football team and become the star running back. Others had thought that was fortuitous. They hadn't seen him practicing in the farm field throughout the eight, his eighth grade, running, dodging, jumping. The cows had not been amused, but he'd shed the victim circumstance that bit, had been his unfortunate name, that his unfortunate name had brought on. He stepped into the registrar's office and up to the window. I'm here to check in, he said. There's a typo on my application. My name is really torn, just torn. At 7.01 a.m., I returned to the writer's diary. Just back to the desk, did three sprawling pages of morning pages. Today is the beginning of the six-week challenge that I'm facilitating with some of the members of my Let's Practice Together community via the Substack site. Please check practicetogether.com if you'd like to try it out practicetogether.substack.com. I'm going to recommend that people make their own private contract with themselves, one that they can share the contents of, but they don't have to. I don't really think it's helpful to create a win-lose scenario around creativity. Still, a challenge and a standing commitment can help us move through the sluggishness and those resistances that we don't actually deserve, that don't actually deserve that our time of day. I'm going to recommend an approach I've seen in a variety of places. And despite my almost manic propensity to save quotes and reference material, I don't think I have it anywhere in my files. But this is kind of the general idea anyway. Essentially it's this, have a stretch goal and then have a middle plan. And then it's okay. It's not really what I wanted, but it's more than I would have done without this focus. So really I ought to be quite pleased. Since I'm writing and sharing this consciously, I'm okay to share that my stretch goal is to do morning pages six days a week. I know that Julia Cameron says every day, but I ascribe to the notion that a day of rest is a good thing and patterns are made stronger by periodic breaks in them. I'll have to think about what's on my middling, probably three days, right? And the longer it's okay goal post, well, at least two, even if I have to do a catch up day on Sunday. Oh, also, interesting question. Do people begin their weeks on Sunday or Monday? George Cow, the facilitator of the online authentic marketing group I'm in, just asked that question. I thought it was rather pick a uni until I really realized it makes a big difference in planning. Without it, how are you going to set your goals or attain them? All right, before I get to my goal of moving my Saigon Diaries project forward, nearly 80,000 words that I need to sort out, I'll just share this one line from my morning pages. I know, I know, according to the book, you're not supposed to look back at them, but you might have noticed by now that I don't really go by the book, strictly speaking. Final paragraph, message from beyond, so to speak. Don't forget to allow enjoyment and to make space for wonder, delight, awe, miraculous thinking, feelings, and happenings. Learn some elevating poetry by heart. You don't have to save anything. 
You can just be present and notice how things are and opt for the tiniest movement toward a higher happenstance. Tiny turns equals a long-term change over time. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. So there you have it. Oh, and a sharp shin hawk just landed on my branch, a branch right outside my window, just behind that marvelous splash of red leaves. What a nice tip of the hat from life. Hawk is meant is a sign as a messenger. And I cut and pasted some reference material about that, which how you can always look up. But um, yes, Hawk is meant to be a sign of a messenger and also a sign to keep your eyes out on what's really going on right around you. At 734, I said right off the bat, this is a recap of what I did with the Saigon Diaries. Right off the bat, I began a dither on the age of Avery. I just opened my working slideshow with tips to help me work through all of this. And it says upper middle grade protagonists should be 12 to 14. But Ada, Ada in The War That Saved My Life is just 10. And that book also has universal appeal. So maybe this book isn't upper middle grade. Also, she does say, the that article does say, do what's right for the character. Going into seventh grade, especially in 1974, was huge. And in Taiwan, the school was probably what was the junior high. So Avery was thinking about being in the same school as her older sister. I just had to go, of course, and look up, when did junior high schools become middle schools? Junior high schools used to be seventh and eighth grade or seventh, eighth and ninth. And now they've changed it over, well, actually it turned out to be since um, it was kind of over the 1900s, um, work to shift that to six to eight. Oh, I'm feeling frustrated at exploring this tiny detail. And yet it's also so important because Avery wants to be one of the older kids. And if she's included in the school with them, then she'd have a logical reason to think she's one of the older kids. Hmm, interesting. The older site was grades five and up that in, in Vietnam the older school site. So if she's turning 11, but is included in the sixth grade due to her smarts, she had started school early. Okay, another timeline to fill out. One of the days, I'll get to the actual history. Oh, wait, look, affiliated out in the woods. Oh my goodness, what a great desk I have. So yes, that discrepancy could or would add a sense of unease, the one about her age and what grade she's in that perhaps the re readers can relate to. <clears throat> Here I am in this space. I don't feel like I quite fit. That is, they could relate to that more easily than moving to a foreign country or a war zone. Of course, I'd have to be careful of the character's former unfortunate whiny put upon demeanor. No one liked that in any of the workshop groups I had, least of all me, because so, the character was modeled on me. How could I be such a whiner, huh? All right, and that brought me right up to 824, which um, I made one final note. Time to wrap up these morning's writings. It's been about two hours with a small break for making tea. If this is going to work long-term, I need to stop. It's a sign of trust. So that is my sharing of my writing morning. Just a little recap of what I've done and how my process is going. Truthfully, it's hard to share because it seems like everything takes so long. However, it's real life. So if you enjoy these, please like, subscribe, comment. Thanks so much. And whatever you do, take care. Be gentle with yourself. It's not how far we go or what we attain. It's the space we create around us with our attitudes and our good feelings. Not easy to come by, but I think worth it.